I'm headed to San Antonio making a pit stop near Fall City, Texas. I spotted something very strange on Google Maps satellite imagery and I just have to check it out. Let's go see what it is. So right now, you might be worried about me. You see the sign, no trespassing by order of the US Department of Energy. You might be worried because there's uranium. What about all the radiation? Uranium emits alpha radiation, which cannot penetrate my skin. However, you don't want to inhale it or eat it. My name is Natasha Bajma, and these are my dogs, Charlie and Luna. We're embarking on the adventure of a lifetime a 365 day journey across America with my Ford 350 Super Duty pickup truck and a truck camper. But this is no ordinary road trip. This is what happens when a disillusioned nuclear weapons expert going through a midlife crisis tries to begin a new career but can't quite get off topic. Radioactive Road Tripping is a travelogue show that documents my transformation from a longtime national security expert to a newbie director, cinematographer, and producer. Today I'm heading to San Antonio to do my first film shoot for the pilot episode of my show. In my research on nuclear weapons in Texas, I spotted something strange on Google Maps satellite imagery near Fall City, and I've decided to check it out. Now, some of you might drive by this 127 acre mound of dirt and ask why it's there. Some of you might not notice it at all, but I bet most of you will be surprised to find out what it actually is. Texas has long been known as oil and natural gas country. If you've traveled through parts of Texas, it's hard to miss the active oil and natural gas wells scattered around the state. After moving to South Texas in 2019, however, I was rather surprised to learn that the region contains some of the largest uranium reserves in the entire country. Uranium is a naturally occurring radioactive element. It is the source material for both nuclear energy production and nuclear weapons. Uranium production in Texas has been dormant for some time due to the low price of uranium. However, there are at least six or seven mines located in South Texas that are ready to spring into action should operations become economically viable. I've just turned down a dead end gravel road. The site in question is located on our left I'm going to drive by the full length of it and then we'll turn my truck around to take a closer look. I finally found a place to turn my truck around and we're headed back to the site. It's now located to my right. This is kind of exciting for me. This is the first pit stop for my show and I'm starting to realize that my departure for my one year road trip across the United States is right around the corner. You might be wondering what that big pile of rock and dirt is behind me. On Google Maps, this is called Uranium Lake, but it's not really a lake, is it? It's actually a big pile of radioactive dirt. This area is near Fall City, Texas. We're also not far from San Antonio. It used to be used as a mining and milling site for uranium. The mining company dumped the uranium leftovers into open mining pits and covered them up with dirt. Between 1992 and 1994, the U.S. Department of Energy came out and collected all of the contaminated materials and put them into a deposit cell. That's what you see behind me. The government regularly monitors radiation levels in the groundwater, but most of the groundwater under this deposit cell is no longer suitable for human consumption. So right now, you might be worried about me. You see the sign, no trespassing by order of the U.S. Department of Energy. You might be worried because there's uranium. What about all the radiation? Uranium emits alpha radiation, which cannot penetrate my skin. However, you don't want to inhale it or eat it. So this device here is my Geiger counter and we're just gonna switch it on to see what the radiation levels are. Okay, it's starting to pick up background radiation. The normal range for background radiation is five to 50. A Geiger counter is a tool for measuring radiation. 
Radioactive particles in the environment enter a tube located in the box behind the information display and interact with the gas in the tube to form ion pairs. The device counts the number of ion pairs that are created and indicates the count per minute CPM on the screen. The more radioactivity that is present in the environment, the greater number of ion pairs produced within a given time. It's important to understand that no matter where you're located, there's always some background radiation from the sun, the soil, plants, food, and rocks. According to this nuclear radiation safety guide, the normal count per minute ranges from 5 to 50. A medium level of radiation, which should be monitored regularly, ranges from 51 to 99. A high level of radiation ranges from 100 to 1000. In other words, if the Geiger counter indicates more than 1,000, I need to get out of this area probably pretty quickly. In addition to the amount of radiation, the type also matters. There are five types of dangerous radiation emitted from radioactive materials, alpha, beta, gamma, x-rays, and neutrons. Radiation types vary in their ability to penetrate certain materials and cause damage, whereas gamma radiation can penetrate dense materials such as the walls of a building, alpha radiation produced by uranium cannot pass through paper or our skin. However, alpha particles can do significant damage to internal organs if inhaled or swallowed. Although I am currently being exposed to alpha radiation, I'm not that concerned because I won't be here all that long. However, I can't imagine living next to this radioactive pile of dirt and having to inhale dust from it my entire life. I think that's as high as it's gonna go. How long will it be before this mound loses its radioactivity? Billions of years. This pile of radioactive dirt will outlive us all. Well, I don't know about you, but my mind has been blown. I didn't expect to pick up that much background radiation so far away from the mound. Now I'm headed for my next pit stop in San Antonio. I hope you'll join me on what will likely be another wild ride. Uranium mining produces radioactive and hazardous waste in the form of uranium tailings. By giving off radioactive particles, the leftover uranium decays into radium, an element that releases a radioactive gas called radon. Wind can blow radioactive dust from uranium waste into populated areas and contaminate surface water used for drinking. Some disposal sites also contaminate the groundwater underneath. If you want to follow my journey, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'd like to have access to behind the scenes content and exclusive merchandise, become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Natasha Bajima.